Good day. Uh, this is our ARCA again, and this is for the discussion of Lesson 5, which is Requirements Collection and Approach to Database Design. Okay. So for the learning objectives, we have enumerate the purpose of requirements analysis. Define each purpose of requirement analysis. Define what are business objects. Enumerate the business object characteristics and define the relationship between business objects. So the discussion is more on about how we will be able to define um, the objects that we have on the, the creation of the database. So, ano-ano ba yung mga kailangan nating data? Saan natin kinukuha? Paano natin nakukuha? Paano tayo nag analyze no? So, collecting data is relatively easy, but turning raw information into something useful requires that you know how to extract precisely what you need. Hindi naman lahat ng information na about dun sa mga bagay na nire-record natin could be used, uh, there are certain informations na kailangan lang. Hindi naman lahat. Okay? So, in this uh, module, intermediate to experienced programmers interested in data analysis will learn techniques for working with data in a business environment. Now, you will be able to identify what are these business entities or uh, these entities that are being used to be able to create those databases. You will learn how to look at data to discover what, is, what it contains and how to capture those ideas in conceptual models. So, nung nakaraan, meron tayong tinatawag na ERD or Entity Relationship Diagram that produces a diagram that, that determines how you will be able to design your database. This could be one of those uh, lectures na kailangan natin to be able to uh, amplify the information that we have about creating databases. So in terms of uh, requirement collection, use graphics to describe data with one or two or dozens of variables, develop conceptual models as using back of envelope calculations, and mine data with computationally intensive methods such as simulation and clustering. So Pwede tayong makakuha ng information with different types of, of processes na pwede natin magamit. No? Uh, we could use graphs or yung tinatawag natin visualization data natin. We could also use uh, the models or na we could use or such as methods. And we could also mine data but we'll be using different types of uh, algorithms to be able to to get those informations that we need. So make your conclusions understandable through the reports and dashboards and other metric programs. So, ibig sabihin, if we collect data, then or if we want to get information properly, syempre kailangan rin naman na makita natin yung mga information na to. And if they are visual, dapat medyo clear kung paano natin sila nakukuha. Understand financial calculations, including the time value of money, and use the dimensionality reduction techniques or predictive analytics to conquer challenging data sit analysis situations. So, ang predictive analytics kasi is coming from historical data. Ibig sabihin, mga pinagsama-samang data through the years, hindi lang naman basta years, pwede mas matagal pa. And they use this to be able to, to get patterns, to understand different scenarios at to predict kung ano yung pwede mangyari sa hinaharap. So become familiar with different open source programming environments for data analysis. So ano ba yung purpose ng requirements analysis? So the purpose of the requirements analysis is to examine the existing database, conduct user interviews, create a data flow diagram, which is uh, pag bibigyan natin uh, sa discussion na to, and determine user views, and document all the findings. Okay? So requirement analysis is the most important and most labor-intensive stage in DBLC. Kasi, uh, or database life cycle. Kasi, kailangan makuha mo ng maayos yung information para nang sa ganun, makakreate ka ng tamang database. So if the analysis and the requirements uh, that you gathered will produce negative results, then that could be a problem. Most database designers begin requirements analysis by examining the existing database to establish a framework for the remaining tasks. So most of the uh, creation, created applications 
could have an existing database, whether it be manual or computerized. No? So, ibig sabihin, you could, you could experience na hindi lang naman coming from raw, pwede rin naman ang meron silang existing software na ginagamit at pwedeng pagandahin na lang to, i-connect man kung ano yung ginagawa mo or pwedeng dagdagan kung ano man yung function na meron sila or i-pagandahin -i yung, yung proseso. Analyzing how an organization stores data about its business objects and scrutinizing its perception of how it uses stored data. The database requirements are determined by interviewing both the, the producers and users of data. So, yun yung pinakamahalaga. Sino yung gumagawa ng data, yung producer, at sino yung gagamit ng data at para saan. Okay? So, you need to understand kung, kung ikaw yung gumagawa ng, use, nung, nung, nung data, pwedeng ikaw yung nag-fill up ng form, ikaw yung naglalagay ng data sa date sa sa, sa application ano ano yung mga nilalagay mo bakit saan di ba kailan at ano ang halaga niya para dun sa ginagawa mong uh, system and syempre sino yung gagamit ng data so most likely these are the users okay specification includes the data required for processing the natural relationships and software platform for the database so Pag nilagay natin na, na pag sinabi natin specification nung, nung, nung database natin, um, alam naman natin na meron tayong RDBMS or Relational Database Management System, di ba? And ang sabi natin dito is kung, kung ikaw ay gagawa ng database, the reason why you put information or data because you see this information as somewhat related to the process that you're doing. Hindi ka basta-basta maglalagay ng information na hindi kailangan sa kanya. No? So, isa yung sa mga bagay na dapat tignan natin. Okay. So, you need to define and identify an organization's business objects. Okay? So, meron tayong mga bagay na tatawag na business objects. This, um, identifying an organization business objects is typically the first order of business during quorum's analysis. So, kailangan malaman mo muna. So, kung... Kung meron tayong lecture doon sa ERD, ano nga ba yung kapareho nito? Ito yung, ito yung mga tinatawag nating entity. Sila yung mga bagay na nagbibigay ng information sa sa database pag kinreate natin sila. Since most database design situations involve business that already have some sort of database in place, the first place to look for business objects is in the existing database. Okay? So, pero pwedeng may mga table na kagad doon sa existing database na pwede mong tignan if you want to create one. Whether legacy or paper-based or both. Pag sinabi natin legacy, data, uh, le legacy database, ito yung mga luma. No? So, tulad ng sinabi natin kanina, hindi lang naman basta computerized. Pwede rin namang manual yung, uh, ano natin, yung makikita natin na, na proseso nila. So, we need not to, to exclude those but to include them because they could be important for the creation of the database. So, no matter what it is, it's computerized or manual, kasama yon. Basta may kinukuwang information. Pero you need to look at it first, kung kailangan talaga o hindi. Business objects are things. Both tangible and intangible. Pag sinabi natin tangible and intangible, pwedeng nahahawakan, pwedeng hindi nahahawakan. In a business environment that are related. So, yan yung importante. Related dapat. Kasama siya sa information. Nakukuha na natin siya ng information. So, we have a sample here uh, such as employees, projects, customers, appointments, students, products, orders, suppliers. And all of these are could be objects within a organization. During requirements analysis, business objects must be identified and sorted according to the subject. If two or more distinct subjects categories appear, a database could uh, should be created for each. So, ibig sabihin kung, kung iba yung tinutukoy ng isa, pwede natin gawa ng sariling database. Okay, so let's talk about multiple databases. So, ano nga, ano nga ba yung mga multiple databases na, na tinatawag natin? So, the first one is the legacy database, which is a database that has been used for so many years. Pwedeng lumang database na to na iba yung version niya kaysa sa mga nilalabas natin ngayon. Pero definitely we see it as somewhat 
a usable database. No? We have a ba paper-based database. So it's a filing system in which data is stored in a variety of paper forms. So ito yung mga nila nakalagay sa cabinet most of the time na kinukuha rin naman natin na information. Ang problem nga lang, medyo space-consuming yung dating niya. Kaya nga natin ginagawang computerized para mas maging uh, maluwag o maganda yung pagkuha natin ng information. Tsaka mas safe. Kasi subject for deterioration pag mga paper-based. Entity, a single stand-alone unit or a business object. So, sulat na natin kanina, it is, an object is an entity. Somehow, it is a, a part of an organization where we get information. It could be a person, a place, or a thing, which is what we describe an entity. It could be an event, no? Something that we could utilize to be able to, to process our, our transactions or process informations with the system. So number four, we have SQL. Now, standard query language or structured pala, structured query language. Uh, ito yung paraan natin ng pakikipag-usap sa database. Pag sinabi natin paraan ng pakikipag-usap, um, we see it something like this. So let's say we have a computer and the computer that we use is being used by a user. Okay? So ang mga programmer, ginagawa lang natin sila ng mga applications na nakikita natin sa computer. Pero naka-separate as a different object yung ating mga databases which is nandito yung mga list natin sa loob. Okay? Now, kung meron tayong software na nasa computer, Meron din naman sa loob ng computer, merong database na kailangan natin kumunek sa kanya para kung ano man yung request nating information dito as a user, pwede niyang ibalik at maipakita sa atin. Hence, pwede tayong mag-update, delete ng mga or edit ng mga uh, add ng mga data doon sa database. And para magawa natin yun, kailangan natin yung SQL. So yung mga SQL commands na yan, yan yung mga ginagamit natin to be able to make use of this data within the database. So, ang ginagawa lang naman ng usually na programmer, they they create these commands for you to interact with, but they need the SQL commands for you to be able to interact with the database itself. No? So, ginagawa rin naman ng programmer yan, pero minsan kasi may iba-iba rin na, na, na roles pagdating sa development ng software. Okay, so let's talk about business objects or business object characteristics. Every business object has a characteristic that describe it. Pag sinabi natin characteristic, ito yung tinatawag natin attribute sa ERD. So, di ba meron tayong mga mga entity and this entity has attributes na nilalagay natin sa sphere. And these are the descriptors of this entity. Di ba? So, yan yung mga, kunyari, kung student to, kung student yan, meron siyang name, ID, address, birthday, and course. So, ganun yung dating ng characteristics. We need to describe this. Kasi, ang lumalabas, ito yung table, yung student, tapos yung mga attributes na nakikita natin o characteristics, sila yung nagiging field. Okay? Sila yung mga nagiging field na kailangan ma-fill upon to be able to add information into those tables. So products will have names, prices, descriptions, and so on. Appointments will have times, days, and so on. So ibig sabihin, it just basically are the attributes of these business objects. So something to describe them. As you can see here, uh, ganun yung dating ng mga uh, nakikita natin sa kanila. Okay, so these are the objects, employees, products, vendors, raw materials, and just concerts. And then, itong mga information na nakikita natin dito, yan, yan yung mga characteristics nila. So, yan na yung mga field, mga bagay na pinipil upan pa isa-isa para ma-describe natin ng maayos yung mga, ito, yung mga object na yan. Kapag properties niya, bagay or information na tungkol sa kanya. So, let's say if we talk about students, binigay natin address. If we talk about books, then we're talking about title, page number, publisher, uh, the title itself, the, ca the category, no? or genre, sino yung author. So, yun yung pwede natin ilagay kung, kung books. So, just an example. 
So business object consisting of six tables, one customer, as you can see on the on the layout. The characteristics of uh, uh, business objects are converted into the attributes. So same thing with what we were saying earlier. Yeah, if the objects are the entities in ERD, then the characteristics are the attributes in the ERD. So these attributes are fields that we need to fill up on the on in the database. So, so relationships between business objects, these are uh this is really important because you need to understand bakit nga ba natin siya nilagay? Bakit ba natin siya kinukuha yung listahan na yan? So, for example, a student needs a subject. So, we need to have a list of subject. So, that's another table. So, kung meron, kung meron tayong database, kunyari. At yung database natin is about enrollment. And then, we have a, few, a set of tables. So, pwedeng ito ay student table. Pwedeng ito ay course Kasi kailangan natin listahan ng course. Then, subject, syempre. Kasi kailangan natin ng listahan ng subject. Okay, so, we need this to be able to, to identify ano nga ba yung mga relations ng dalawa. So, sa mga, sa, sa mga bagay pa lang na sinabi natin, alam natin ang student kailangan niya ng course at kailangan niya ng subject. So, pwede natin makita na kailan ang mga related entity natin dito is kailangan rin natin ng prof. Kasi kailangan, kung gagawa tayo ng enrollment, kailangan natin malama kung sino yung magtuturo ng subject or yung pag-create ng schedule. No? So, you need to identify if these entities are related and how they are related and why do we need them to make it uh, justifiable that we need it to, in, to be included in the database. So, you need to understand the relationship between them. Okay, business rules or business policies. In other words, business rules reflect how a business perceives it to use its data. So pag sinabi natin business policies, ito yung mga bagay na ina-apply natin or ruling na ina-apply natin na uh, pinapatupad ng isang business. So let's say for example, um, meron, kayong, meron, meron tayong uh, online ordering system. Tapos yung online ordering natin is for a a food house within Bulacan. So, ang problem natin doon, may limitation siya. Like, for example, if you are within Bulacan, hanggang saan lang yung pipwede niyang kayang deliveran. Like, for example, kung taga San Jose ka, San Jose del Monte City, anyone who orders within San Jose del Monte City lang yung pipwede natin servisan. Kasi kapag umabot ng Santa Maria ng Garay at din nagde-deliver tayo ng food, hindi na siya mainit. So, the quality will be not that good. Kasi nga, di ba, pag food, gusto natin mas mainit as much as possible, parang bagong luto. Pag malayo yung delivery, hindi natin madideliver ng maayos. So, ibig sabihin, we need to consider this. So, kung meron akong form sa isang website na kailangan kong fill upan, okay, at naka-order na ako ng food, then nilagay ko yung address Siyempre, ang gagawin natin dyan, lilimitahan natin yung address. Kailangan, hihiwalay mo yung house number, etc. Pero yung location, isa lang yung pipwede. Dapat naka-indicate dyan, only delivers in San Jose del Monte to preserve quality. Pwede yun, no? So, some business rules are especially important to the database designer because they can be incorporated into the logical scheme of the database. So if there there are center, certain rules that could be applied then the design of the relationships will be also be applied kung, kung paano sila nakalink no paano kinukuha kasi it will determine how it will be used Okay so what are the database rules importance There are certain constraints that designers apply to ensure that the database do, do, honors a company's business rule these constraints helps preserve data integrity. So, ito lang an example natin kanina. Um, there are reasons why we do these constraints or rules uh, since we want to make sure that we are delivering delivering quality services. No? So, isa yung sa mga bagay na tinitingnan natin. Like, for example, sign up sa, sa website. So, usually, ang ginagawa, you input your... your uh, birthday para ma-determine kung ikaw ay pwedeng mag-access ng information na pwedeng mo makita 
sa isang website. Kasi kinakailangan na malaman kung pwede ka or hindi. Let's say for example, if you want to order pero below ano ka pa lang, below 18. So, may mga programs sa online na kapag below 18 ka, hindi ka pinapayagan sa mga bag- sa mga sa mga bagay-bagay na pwede mong i-access like if you want to order hindi basta-basta pwede kasi hindi natin alam kung sino yung magbabayad, ganyan. And let's say, for example, if you want to order, may limitations, kailangan bago mo masubmit yung request for the order, mag-input ka muna ng information like yung address mo, yung birthday mo, or for some cases, kailangan parang may payment wall na tinatawag. Pag sinabi natin may payment wall, kailangan mag- magbayad ka to be able to access this first. Or let's say, for example, If you want to pro- request orders, they need to have your credit card information if you could actually order one. So, may mga ganong klase ng uh, constraints na nakikita natin. Pero syempre, meron tayong tayo pinatawag na field constraints. Okay, there's a bar field constraints that can be imposed on a database to honor the business rules. Number one is the business rule. And number two is the field constraint. So, pag business rule, It's a rule that is applied by the the business. For example, address. So sabi natin kanina, hanggang saan lang ako pwede mag-deliver? So ang mangyayari noon, kung hanggang saan lang ako pwede mag-deliver, uh, most likely ang mangyayari is para bang ang pwede lang i-input is San Jose del Monte. O limit na kagad 'yon. Business rule 'yon. Pag sinabi naman nating field constraint Pwede nating limitahan kung ano lang yung pwedeng gamitin ng ano nung ng user. So let's say for example, uh, in date of birth, hindi siya tatanggap kapag uh, na-compute ng program na siya ay 18 pababa. Or 17 below. Starting from 17 below. Kasi 18 parang legal na yun dito sa atin sa Pilipinas eh. Pero yung 17 below, yun yun. No, so hindi ka pwedeng mag-access ng information. So those are the, those are the things that we could actually apply in our designs na may limitation. Like for example, dun sa pwedeng mong kuhanin courses sa ICI. So kapag merong drop down uh, list tayo, ibig sabihin limitado lang yung pwedeng mong pagpilian. Kasi yun lang yung available, hindi naman kahit anong course lang kuhanin mo eh. Syempre may limitations din. So let's move on with the relationship constraints. Okay? So there are various constraints that can be placed on the relationship link between tables. Consider the example below. So business rule, every vendor must supply at least one product. So that's the rule. So ibig sabihin, hindi ako pwedeng mag-add ng vendor tapos blanco yung product na kanyang binibenta. No, that's 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 that that will be a problem. Parang naglagay ka ng information pero hindi mo ginamit. The relationship between the vendors and table and products must be governed by a participation constraint, wherein a single record in the vendors table must be related to at least one record in the products table. So, makita naman natin na ito ay related dito kasi yan yung dinideliver niya. Then, channel supplies that also delivers this one. So, ang constraint niya required na hindi ka pwedeng mag-add ng list sa vendor name nang wala siyang nakalink na product ID or product na din deliver So, let's say for example, sa library, naglista ka ng book. So, meron ka listahan ng authors. So, one ruling doon, hindi ka pwede mag-add ng author nang wala naman siyang book na nakalista doon sa, sa sa library system or sa, sa information system ng library, sa, sa, sa table ng books. Na Parang anong nangyari, nilagay mo yung author pero wala siyang libro, so sayang lang din yung information na nilagay mo. And kasi hindi siya magagamit. So make sure na siya ay merong information. So that's a constraint between the tables. Okay. Interview users of data to generate requirement analysis. So you need to do uh, these uh, interviews to be able to determine how data are currently being used and perceived, determine whether users require additional information, or to determine future growth requirements. So remember, if we go to a client, therefore, there are three things that we could find out. 
the first one is they have an existing problem. They have a future problem. Or they could have an enhancement on their process. So we try to find these things. No? Ito yung mga una natin hinahanap. Kasi pag may existing talaga, mahirap din naman na sabihin na magkakaproblema kayo ganyan. So you need to uh, check everything first. So the interview will be the best one because they will provide us on how how the flow works. Minsan kasi ang problem pag nag interview mga history lang or information lang yung nakukuha. Yung basic information lang. Pero you need to uh, dive deep onto the process of the system or the, or the client to be able to determine the requirements that you need to be able to create the database. It's not just a basic interview. It could be process-specific. No? So, kailangan makuha natin yung talaga yung pinaka-core information natin for, for the creation of the database. So, really will analysis of an organization's existing database, whether legacy or paper-based, reveal the full range of organization's informational needs. If that were the case, the role of the database designer in creating the database would get, be generally, will be greatly diminished. Interviewing data users about future needs enables the designer to rethink design options. So there are cases that if we look on legacy databases or paper-based, minsan may mga listahan sila dyan na walang ID. So you as a database designer would need to rethink these fields. Meron ba tayong mga kailang idagdag dun sa information na nakikita natin? Which, in which is very critical. Let's say for example, for orders. So usually sa mga paper-based na listahan, uh, pag may order siya, meron siyang uh, yung pangalan ng umorder, yung product na in-order, at saka kailan yung delivery. So yun yung listahan sa logs. No? Pero pag naggumawa na tayo ng database, minsan naglalagay tayo ng field na status usually pag sa mga transaction. Status, ibig sabihin, pwedeng na-deliver na, processing pa lang, or kung ano man. Diba? So, that status indicates what is the status of this transaction. Pero hindi naman natin yan nilalagay kapag manual or paper-based pa lang. Mga, yung, yung mga basic information lang yung nilalagay natin. So, kapag nag-design ka ng database, pwede madagdagan ng fields or data na tingin mo kailangan ng ilagay. So, nasa yun. Okay, so let's talk about relational data flow diagram. I, 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 we will be discussing the basic, but we will have a, a, another a discussion for the full, uh, the full flow discussion for relational data flow diagram. So basically, the, the data flow diagram uh, designs how will the data flow within the system. Sino sino yung pinupuntahan at pa, ano yung information na nakukuha. Ganun yung ano niya, yung design niya. Okay. So there are different types of ways to be able to create a data flow diagram. No, may minsan kasi iba't iba interpretation. Pero for for the programming side, you will be uh, using the processes, the flow lines, etc. No, pero marami rin namang versions yan. Okay, so um, while there are different styles of data flow diagrams, like nabi natin, there are quite similar in appearance. Okay. The Jordan and the Marco data flow diagram yung gagamitin. So, um, we need to determine who handles the data. Square yung ginagamit. Where the data moves, arrows or data flow. Where the data is stored or uh, saan siya nilalagay. So, usually parang ano yan, ganito. Parang ganyan. Which is yung pangalan ng database. Okay. O kung dito, par kung two parallel lines, ganyan lang. Tapos yung pangalan ng database mo or table. Like for example, student. Ganyan. Okay. So may sample naman tayo mamaya. And what is done to the data or yung process? So sa iba, ganito yung process kasi. Uh, rounded square yung ginagamit. Okay. So let's take a look at this example. So, it is not always necessary to create a data flow diagram. For example, source in CD uh, Inc. is small with only one subject database. It is not necessary to create a diagram to understand the flow of the data. Okay, so we have two entities here. So, usually, 
place in a square, sino man yung gamit, then the process. So right now, it's hotel reservation. But there are different levels kasi of relational uh, data flow diagram. So sabi ko nga, there will be a full-blown discussion about this. So for now, we'll just discuss for the basic. So we can see the flow line. So yan. So in this flow line, nakikita naman natin dyan is yung mga ano yung gagawin niya. Okay? So cancel information, room information. So you could see this as titles na may lamang data. Reservation form, cancellation form, information of the room, guest information, hotel info, reservation and cancel information. So everything that flows in these lines supposed to be is a form of information. It could be paper-based. It could be understandable data. Let's say, for example, list. Okay, yung mga list. Stahan. Info. Details. So, yan yung mga nilalagay natin dyan. So, kung ano-ano mga mga forms na tinatawag. Registration form, cancellation form, etc., etc. Pwedeng resibo. Kasi receipt consists of also information no yan siya sa sulat sa mouse pero it's consist of information so ibig sabihin kailangan din naman natin siya okay so remember uh, the squares are the entities in ng gamit the process is the circle and in the lines are these informations that we need to to transfer saan siya napupunta okay so in some cases uh, there are links of these informations into parallel lines saan na si save yung information uh, so tulad na sinabi ko there will be a full blown discussion about uh, relational data flow diagrams however large organization with several subject databases will require num numerous user views uh, to that, that draw for different databases so, ano ang reason kung bakit natin siya kailangan? To determine what data from which database go into different user views, sino-sino at ano yung nakakakita, sino yung nakakakita at ano yung data nakakita. And to assist application designers in, in planning the database application programs, it helps programmers to design the flow. So, reason for creating user views. There are three important reasons for creating user views. So, number one, data security. Kasi kailangan mo malaman ano lang yung kaya niyang i-access. User needs, ano yung mga kailangan ng user, syempre. Alam nga naman, kunyari, ikaw ay isang cashier pero wala kang access sa listahan ng products, that could be a problem. And also calculated fields. So we really need this to be able to make sure that we have an ease on accessing the data. That's, that's basically it. The access of data must be defined. It needs to be specific. We need to redirect these data informations from different people kasi na gumagamit ng database. So, data security is the user views were defined earlier in terms of data security. They specify which users are permitted to access the data. Sino yung pwede? So, we're trying to explain three uh, reasons. Um, you need to also determine kung sino yung, ano yung gagamitin niya. Okay, so since yun na yung ma-access niya, there's no problem with it. Dahil ma-define mo kasi ano lang yung pwede niya makita. Okay, and then syempre protecting database uh, using the security. So although it is possible to interact with the database management, either with basic forms for a small product or the SQL command line, a business usually has employees who must manipulate data but not to have necessary expertise. So, hindi siya marunong mag-program pero marunong silang gumamit ng application can't do or do not want to gain necessary expertise or should not have direct access to the database for security reasons. So may dahilan kung bakit minsan dinidemo pa yung system at pinapaalam kung sino-sino yung mga pipeding gumamit kasi kailangan natin yun. Okay? So most DBMS are designed for business use, provide some way to develop such applications. The larger the, the DBMS, the more likely it is application development requires a traditional Programming skills. 
smaller product support graphic tools for growing forms and report layouts. So we need to protect the data. So that's one of the main reasons for that's why we need the requirements analysis. Determining the user that will be using the data, how they will be able to use it. Determining what a user should see. Kung ano mga klaseng user siya. That is really important. Okay, so we need to, to get this information from different types of analysis. So kanina lang, yung, yung ERD na pag-usapan natin, the data flow diagram na, na, na pag-usapan natin, na kung saan, pwede natin makita sa data flow kung paano, paano tinatransfer yung data or yung information. Now that is important. Okay? So that's it for the discussion for lesson number five. I hope this helps for anyone who wants to review for this lesson. And again, this is Sir Aga, and thank you for watching the lecture. Maraming salamat po.